Okay. Hello everyone. How is everyone today? Yay, it's Sunday. I know y'all are tired. I'm tired as well too. Well, um, Desi, she's going to run a little bit late, but I also know some stuff about cosplaying and tips and tricks and hacks in order to help you to make costumes really easily. And usually what I do, and it's just a hack that I usually do, is basically, let, let's say that you want to, you're a beginner, and you don't know much about pattern making, and you don't know much about like, basically how to sew and everything. The neat thing that you can do, which I usually do when I usually make my costumes, is that you get a white shirt, just a plain white collared shirt that you can find anywhere. You can get this at a thrift store or even at Walmart. And um, can I have a, somebody up here for an example, please? <coughs> Anybody? Just as long. You have a baggy shirt, that's perfectly fine too. Oh, yes, volunteer. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. Okay, testing. Okay, cool. So, usually I don't want to get this um, type of material because it stretches. So, when you're trying to do this, make sure you don't have something that stretches. So, usually collar shirts are usually the first thing to do, and you can get that easily. So, usually what I do here is that you get a baggy shirt. Don't get something that's skin tight, just get something that's pretty baggy. This could go for men or women. And usually when you see over here, if you turn around, there's right here, a little bit over here, a little bit, there you go, lift up the arm. There's the seam over here. And this is usually where I mainly pay attention to. So usually if something's really baggy, and you could do this for modifying anything when you would buy a costume, if it's too big on you, you can use this as a modifier as well too. And I go ahead and I pinch it a good amount, and I pinch it all the way to the sides and to the ends until it fits very snugly or something that's comfortable. Now usually you do this, you can have a friend that can help you as well too, or if you have your own mannequin, you can also do that as well, but usually just pinch to the side until it fits and forms to your body. You just here, here, and here, and just get some pins, and then move around a bit to see if it's comfortable for you. And you can do the same thing when it comes to the sleeves, if you want the sleeves are to be a little bit baggy, or if you want them to be nice and tight, you can do that as well too, but make sure you have room to move. So pin it first, move around to see if it'll work. And if it's too tight, you can't move forward, you can't move back, loosen it up a bit, and then continue the process. Now, once you're done, let's say you have this much to pinch, that's when you basically cut the extra off. And that's, you know, regular fabric scissors that works perfectly fine. And then later you can just cut out the edges here and where the seam is as well too, or get rid of the excess. And then that can be your pattern. It is so simple to use. That's a very, very simple way to use. You can sit back down. Thank you very much. Give her a clap, please. <laughs> and that's just one of the things that you can do if you want to kind of make your own pattern. You can make it from scratch. You can Go ahead and add the measurements if you want to, or you can get just a simple t-shirt that's not stretchy and just pinch a little bit until it fits you. You know, just one, two, three, sew it, see if it works, and then there's your pattern. And well, you might be asking like, well, what if I want to add extra to it? Let's say if I want to make a coat. Like, is that gonna be any different? Or let's say if you're making one of those Assassin's Creed outfits that you make and they have those really long tails. That's really easy to do. All you have to do is you have your pattern and you just add to it. You just get simple paper, add a little bit to it, and then that can also be your pattern. If you need a coat, just extend it. And there you go. You want a collar? Just go ahead and draw it out. Just a collar, triangle, you're good to go. And that's just one of the simple ways that you can do. And you can also do this with pants as well too. Let's say if you need to make a pair of pants, just get something from the thrift store, see if it fits you nicely, or if you want it to be shorter, you can just cut it off or um, add more to it, or if you want more of like a bell, just cut over here and add more fabric to it, and you have bell bottoms. And so you just kind of have to have this creative thinking when it comes to making or modifying your own patterns. So um, if you have any questions or you know anything when it comes to pattern making, I'm sorry I don't have examples of like how I do things. And this, these things I do are pretty simple. 
they're not really complex. And I never took sewing. I haven't taken sewing. I haven't um, went to classes. I literally learned this on YouTube. Let's see what I have here. Too bad I don't have a protector. I don't know how to use this thing. Oh, here we go. Yay! Phone has everything. Oh, cool. Now, if y'all want to come up here, I don't know if I can move this thing or I can just put this down. There you go. Cool. Yay. So here's some examples that I have when I'm making a couple of things. And let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Here we go. Now this is just a little bit of modifying that I do, and I'm making an Assassin Creed hoodie from Syndicate. And it's usually just like adding and subtracting a couple of things. And she has like the back that's open, so so if you have something that's open, you just cut the line and there you go. So it's usually like adding and subtracting a lot of things if you want to take a look at it. So, and you could do this with, I usually make a lot of coats or shirts and stuff like that. Here you go. So these are just some of the examples that I did. And the best thing that you should do is just look at them at Shakespeare. Oh, here she is. Hi, friend. Friend. I apologize. I was told it was canceled since I didn't check in Thursday. Oh, okay. Yeah. So my mistake. So I didn't bring my laptop to hook up or anything. Everything's, it all works. I can. It'll all work out? Yeah, it all works out. All works out, man. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Do you want to help me, Miss Nikki? Or do you want to leave? Wait, what do you think? That's up to you. I'll stay. Okay, right. awesome. Yay. I'll hang out with Seth. Because you, cool. you do more draping than I do. So. Yeah, I do a lot of uh, draping. So, if you have questions on that, I mean, draping is usually mainly for um, if you're making something for a woman because they have a lot of curves. So, if you mm -hmm. want to do, you gotta learn some draping if you have the curves. It's also ideal for very tall men since a lot of commercial patterns don't accommodate for anyone taller than 5'8 to 5'9 since that's the average male height. So, it's very helpful. Yeah, and especially if you're short, being short also. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're both very pint sized. I'm 4'11", and then I'm so short that I could get benefits from Texas. 4'9". <laughs> I love you, though. I love you, too. Okay, so shall we introduce ourselves, Mary? Yes, we will introduce ourselves. You first. Hi, I am Desi Diamond. I've been cosplaying since 2008. I've studied fashion design for two years. I do everything from wig design, so couture sewing, pattern making, accessories, a little bit of everything, but props. And I am Saki Kitty, I'm sorry I didn't introduce to myself earlier, but I also do sewing mainly. I did not take any classes, which you will know more, but I usually found tricks, tips, and hacks on how to do things. I know leatherworking, and I also know how to do some props, so if you have any questions, be free. Okay, so I have my little presentation on my phone, luckily, so we're good. I have it outlined on here. So Miss Nikki, we can share my phone today. Yeah. So some of the basic supplies you need to get started with pattern making. I personally like to have a sketchbook since I'll pre-draw it versus like what's actually on the reference to where I can kind of plot out where my seam lines will be. Since I have a short torso, I have to adjust my seam lines to where they actually flatter my figure because if not, I look like I'm six months pregnant. <laughs> So I try to adjust my seam so I'll look how it is with, it's called a croquet. It's a fashion term where it's pretty much a base model and they have them in all different like figures. So you can trace over that to get some of your seam lines prepped for you. I also like to use a rotary cutter when I'm doing my draping fabric just because I can just swipe through it. I think it's a lot faster. And if you go the draping method, I prefer to use muslin when I do my drapes, especially in fashion design class. We had to use muslin. And it's great since you can, it's what? With a coupon, it's like 50 cents a yard. So I would go on it with a Sharpie, mark my seam lines, and then um, true it on my pattern paper. Uh, usually when I um, make my costumes, um, I think ahead of time when it comes to like the type of fabric that I want, or need because sometimes the fabric that you want if you want to go something traditional you might have to have some backing on the end of it to make sure it stays strong um, 
usually like if she has some you know what you need for tools um, make sure when you're making your costume think ahead of time on what you want because if sometimes the fabric might be on sale and you're like well I am planning to do this and already have some of the parts go ahead and get it or if um, see some examples and I have a lot of Assassin's Creed outfits so if you go on the internet they have usually references towards the outfits that you want to make and also the design the pattern or the colors that you need so you know always do a little bit of research ahead of time when you're um, making something because you don't want to use fabric that's going to unra unravel because you know it's going to be destroyed in one con and you already spent so much time making it and that's one thing I'll do in my sketchbook too. I'll put a note of like the fabric I want and some of the notions. And something we would do in my fashion design class, it would be an idea board. So we would have like a reference picture and then some of the fabric options we'd want for when we would design a collection or whatnot. And I still find it helpful since I have a very large fabric stash so I can kind of cut swatches out of the, my scraps from it and then kind of pick what fabric I want. And one thing too, muslin can also be a term just for your draping fabric. So if you're gonna make a sample pattern for leather, you can use craft trim with a corresponding thickness. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to, let's say, try and make a bodysuit, you can get discount fabric off, what's it called? I think it's Spandex House off their clearance section. They'll sometimes have it for like $3 a yard. So you can get it cheaper than, let's say, the $20 yard spandex, or even if you have to get a custom print one, which can run sometimes $30 a yard if you have to get it custom made. Yeah, the internet is a wonderful place to oh, yes. um, get things. So, like, you don't, like, people always complain, like, well, I don't have a fabric store near my area. Like, Amazon or on the internet, they always have deals. Um, Joanne's Fabrics always has deals, at least, especially at the end of the month, they usually try to clear out their warehouse. So you'll find some deals um, as well too, but you can you can find anything on the net. So if you ever have trouble trying to find fabric, you know, um, Etsy. So I bought some fabric for Etsy when I was Etsy doing, has some gorgeous yeah. fabrics. I buy it fake fur on there. Yeah, mold was it not mold and mood fabrics. I follow them oh, on Instagram. They have, gorgeous fabric. they have beautiful fabric that's on sale. You know, it will be wonderful, especially if you're like into like Disney costumes and everything. Yeah, that's one of the places that you probably would love to go. Okay, so the next thing is, we're fortunate now that cosplay has become so mainstream. We finally have commercial patterns available. We don't have to make everything anymore. It's awesome. But not everyone knows how to read a pattern anymore because they're not as commonly used. Back in like my grandmother's day, everyone used to pattern and make everything since, hey, it was for normal people clothes. I don't think cosplay was what they're in the 50s and 40s could have been but i, I have no idea yeah so sewing is kind of like um starting it's to evolved. be a, a dying art it, it is. is it is so you know so it's really hard to i mean i know some people are are making like patterns that you can buy as well too like joanne's has like lots of patterns that you can, especially during halloween halloween's coming in right now so mm -hmm. go ahead and try to search for them you could you could find even patterns cheap online as well too. Some of these patterns might range twenty dollars, but you can find for two dollars. You know, especially online if you look really hard enough. And if you look on eBay too, you'll find some collectors patterns. So if you don't know how to make this, like a Sailor Moon outfit, they actually have this vintage Sailor Moon pattern for little girls. If you have the idea for one, since they don't make the commercial simplicity ones anymore for children but there's a 1999 one that's for kids. And I have that one in my stash just because it's collectible. <laughs> I'm never gonna come into it, I just think it's awesome. <laughs> but the main way you read a pattern is you'll look for your size first. It'll give you sizing instructions on the little flap that go on your measurements. For men, it's normally your chest and waist. So you can always go beforehand to, before you go to the, uh, store and measure and Professor Pincushion on YouTube has a very good video on how to measure yourself correctly and For women it almost always goes by your basic bust waist and hip and most women We don't fit within the sizing line. So we'll have to buy both patterns to kind of grade correctly I always find it's easier to size up than it is to size down I was I really don't know why it's easier to go up and down but I find that it is 
And one thing too that is very important when you read your pattern is it will tell you the recommended fabrics. So don't use a spandex if the pattern is for a woven or then it will be far too large. And then vice versa. Yeah. So always read to make sure. Yeah, especially when you're making spandex costumes, they also like, they know this pattern is for spandex, but it also tells you what the stretch is. So always pay attention, because if you buy something that's like a little bit to a long stretch, but you buy a pattern that is required for like not much of a stretch or a certain amount, then you better definitely check on that. And sometimes if you want to, you just add like maybe an inch or two. If you think like, well, I have bigger hips or I have more of a bust, so I might need more. And on the pattern, it usually says like where the chest is or the hips are, or, or if you want to modify, especially for me since I'm short, so I have to maybe cut a little bit on the waist area because I'm definitely short. So in the pattern actually does tell you like maybe like ways or to add or so to lengthen or shorten here if you're tall, short, whatever, add this much to the hem if you if you're tall, etc. But not every pattern has that for every body type. So I find that making it's called a sloper. It's very helpful. If you go to Berta.com, they have actually slopers and their available pattern sizes. So you don't have to draft them, which is great. Because when you draft a sloper of your own, you have to go on your body form and then mark it for every seam line. And it's your basic, um, for men, it's a pant, sleeve, and then torso. And then for women, it's a sheath skirt, sleeve, and torso. But you don't have to go through all the trouble of truing it, cutting it out, making sure you didn't mess up on your dart, etc. Because it, it, you have to be precise with your um, sloper if you make it yourself or it's completely ruined. But Berta has it for you in pre-done sizes. And it's a big lifesaver if you have no idea how to start pattern dra draping. And I think it's, what, $2.99 per sloper? So it's pretty affordable, too. Yeah, and if you don't have, if you're short on cash most of the time, like I say, internet, Joann's always has, like, stuff for sale. Like, I actually got um, fabric scissors, scissors for, like, half off because they had a sale that was going on. And it's, what is it? I'm trying to think of the pattern company. I believe it's McCall's. Okay. They, yes, they have one that's a sloper for your basic sheath dress, which you can use. It's called a torso foundation, which you can use to create anything <coughs> from a bodysuit to a corset, as well as your sheath dress, which you use for everything to be honest. <coughs> use that to alter sleeves, to make different kinds of bodices, to make different kinds of skirts. And then for men, they have a shirt as well as a pant one. They also have a pant one for women as well. And when it's on sale, it's $1.99 or 99 cents. Just depends on what the sale is at the time. The calls has like been doing great at catering to cosplayers lately. It's been awesome. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, been since, making life easier. Yeah, since cosplay has become basically mainstream, there's a lot of new products and also some cosplayers are actually making patterns for y'all to use. And they try to make it as simple as they can because um, I understand when it comes to like making something like I spend blood, sweat, and tears over a costume. You know, like a couple of people, they always like, oh, you have to make your costume. I'm like, no, nah, sometimes I'm just like perfectly fine buying them. And you can buy a costume and you can actually just tailor it. If you know some basic sewing and tailoring, <coughs> you can buy something, tailor it to your body, and you just save yourself some a lot of pain. But it depends on the alteration. I did bright alterations. <laughs> so if it's a simple shirt taken, yeah, but altering a bridal dress or like a suit, uh, uh, that's where you get into nightmare territory where I thought it was easier to make a wedding dress than to alter one. <laughs> it really was. It was horrifying. Yeah, I tried, I tried to alter something, but it had like backing or, you know, when they flip and it's like right inside, and I'm like, oh, dang, you got to like, Unseen, oh, like, the lining. Yeah, yeah you have to undo the lining and then alter the lining <coughs> after you alter what you did. Yeah, and it takes it like it takes forever, time and a half for that. Um, but you know, sometimes when it comes to if you're you know in a crunch or if you have a costume, let's say you buy a costume online 
and um, it's either a little bit too big or a little bit too short, you can always just add or subtract very easily when it comes to that. And there's also tutorials online of how to just um, fix things that are happening, especially if you have fabrics that are broken, not broken, but ripped, you know, fabric glue sometimes help, or sometimes you get some patches that can also help you as well. Um, pockets. Oh, yes, pockets. Pockets are, are wonderful. I always try to find hidden ways to put pockets. It's actually really easy. Yeah, it's if it's you true. look up an inseam pocket, yes. and Professor Pincushion has another really great tutorial, you can put it in almost anything. It's awesome. I did that for my white knee dress, and I still am too dumb to keep putting pockets in my costumes. But it's really easy. You just make pretty much like a little pocket thing that you just sew onto the side seam, and then it just flips in and it hides in the seam. It's invisible and it's great and I need to start doing it more because I know how to do it and then I don't <laughs> because I'm an idiot. If you don't know how to sew, because um, some people have trouble sewing, that's perfectly understandable. They actually have pockets that you can buy and you just just put it on there, steam it, stays there. Oh, the ones you put like inside the lining. Yeah, Joanne. Yeah, it's um it's very it's pretty easy to do. All you just need is just like an iron and there you go, you can you have a pocket right there. You know, and um, I actually seen some cosplays um, that they did it entirely out of fabric glue. That was amazing. I didn't. I was like, I didn't know you could do that. But there's ways you don't even have to sew, and that you could just use straight up fabric glue. But test it out before anything else, because you don't want that glue to be loose and then everything falling apart. Because sometimes that has has happened in uh, a couple of the places. I can't. It's not me. I'm so. Yeah, I sew everything and like kind of hurt myself. I've, I was in fashion school for two years, so if I don't do things a certain way now, I'm like, it's wrong, it's wrong, start <laughs> over. And one of those things is darts. If I forget to put darts in certain garments, they won't flutter. Men's apparel almost never has a dart because your figure is more rectangular. Women need darts in almost every garment because we have so many curves. My favorite kind is it's not really a dart, it's a princess seam since it takes the place of a bust dart and a waist dart. So I did that with my Juvia costume when I drafted my pattern. So it goes from the side seam down and I had also made the torso longer so it flattered my figure instead of cutting off at the waist so the skirt would be like all the way up there. The princess seam is very flattering on every figure. So I highly recommend learning how to do one correctly since it doesn't matter if you're very petite, you're very large, it's going to contour your figure gorgeously. And you can convert almost any bodice into a princess scene bodice as well. Berta also has a tutorial for how to do that. I go on on Berta Professor Pincushion because they have a lot of tutorials that are very helpful for beginner sewers and pattern makers. And Berta posts a couple every week and they're short little one minute videos that they do like speed runs through. I think the most time consuming one is a 15 minute one that's for how to create one of the slopers. Yeah, and if you ever have trouble trying to find something or if you have questions on like, how do I make this specific item? Let's say if you're doing something from like Dragon Age or Armor or anything, um, look it up on the net. I found some great tutorials on how to, which I'm actually starting, is making um, corsets out of leather. Because I, I mean, I do some armor and leather, so I was like, well, let's see if I can make actually a corset out of leather. So, because I'm doing a Dalish elf, Dalish elf, and I'm like, well, I have the outfit ready, but I want to have the corset. So, I'm actually making one to make it look like bark, like from a tree and everything. And so, that's really cool. If you ever want to follow, I have some cards over here. But I also have some pictures of like, if anyone wants to go through here, here you can come up here and look at it. It's basically, um, on my page, I have like just step-by-step step of everything I do. So from the fabric that you see, from making the, you know, the design, the line out, cutting it, putting it on, adding, deleting, adding all the details that goes with it. It's, everyone, you feel free to come up there and check it out. But usually for like me, like I said in the beginning, I usually don't, <laughs> I kind of just hack most of the things. We have different methods of pattern making. Mine's the prim and proper way, since that's how I was taught. 
and then your hat and my hat and slash YouTube. There's like she's like I went to school for two years, and I'm like I just looked at YouTube videos. Like I used to do it her way, and then I like how my patterns come out more since I have the professional pattern paper, so I can store them so much easier. It's this. Um, one by one grid pattern paper. So it's also really easy for altering your pattern since everyone's weight changes constantly. You can always easily adjust since it's one by one. So you have the little margins on, okay, I need to make it half an inch here. So let me move that a little bit there. Or I want to increase the seam allowance by an inch because I'm really bad at doing like a quarter inch seam allowance. That way I have a little more leeway. You can easily do that. Yeah. I like my patterns lasting longer, so I just have all the ones I made in class in little file folders with my paper. It's been helpful. I'm not I just mind. have my one pattern, which is just my white shirt, which I explained earlier, which is like you just take the trim and just trim it off as much as you can to fit to your body type and cut it out and then cut where the seams are and there's your pattern for all eternity and I've just been using the same one. And if you gain weight or lose weight, you can always just get another $2 shirt and use that. And we have very different methods. Yeah. So we're going through our different ways to help. Like my, this is what I've been doing for years and um, I, was, I was I guess at Delta H and uh, one of the um, all of, one of my friends, Oliver, he has like, um, he goes to fashion school and he brought some of the teachers at ACC, which is the Houston Community College, and one of the professors were there. And then he was like, I want to see how well you do your seams or your pattern or your jacket. So I was like, okay, I'm like, well, I'm telling you, I haven't took any classes, so go ahead, you can criticize me as best you can. <laughs> I'm just waiting to get murdered, actually. I'm just like, oh, yeah, I just did this on my own. And surprisingly, he was very impressed of what I yeah, did. I like ingenuity too. <laughs> I just he was very he was really excited. He's like, you did better than some of my students. And I'm just like, yeah, but it took me years. I just like to give yeah. you a hard time because I know you will. I know. <laughs> like she, but well, she gave me some awesome patterns. Like she, you were cleaning out your. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. Like she, last year I had <laughs> moved, so I gave her some really good foundation patterns in case she ever wanted to use patterns. So always move shop friends who are moving too. Yeah. Always do that. That's how people always get she stuff gave me off like because I move all the time. She gave me books and patterns and everything. I'm actually using one of them now. The like, pink one? Um, no, I'm using the, one of the spandex ones. I'm actually oh, making okay. a Kaneki, gender bending Kaneki from Tokyo Ghoul. So I'm doing that and um, it's like since like I, for me, like I always have to find ways to like how things will move or what I want. And for the, um, when I'm having an idea in my head, like I always have ideas in my head, I'm making the, his, um, huge tentacles that he has and usually sometimes what I do especially when I'm doing um, Assassin's Creed they have like the huge hood that's like perfectly there and like I have mine is all sloppy because like it doesn't stay in one place and usually like my friend got an idea it's like why don't we just put like wiring like thick wiring inside and uh, it will stay in place I'm like that's genius why didn't I think of that so um, interfacing too would also help if you put a lining and then stitched it, top stitch. And yeah, inter I'm, I'm using interfacing on like, especially with like really the colors. colors. That's, that's interfacing awesome. is a must for sewing. I used to not use it for years since my grandmother taught me. She was a depression era seamstress. It was, you know, let me make a skirt out of necessity because that's what I have to do. And oh my gosh, I was as I started doing like fashion competitions junior year of high school. I was like, wait, this, this interfacing is important. I need to start using it. Then my costumes won't suck as much. I was so hard on myself in high school. Sell it. <laughs> so I have my steps for making my patterns. The first one is I always measure myself and then I keep a log since my measurements fluctuate sometimes even within the day. And I like to draw and then plan, especially if I want to do a custom design or change what they have. Just a little bit like with my X-Men Evolution Rook, for example, I didn't want to do a crop top. I made it longer to where it actually covered my full stomach. So I'll do some alterations. And with my uh, Judith from Tales of Vesperia, her um, sash tied in the back. So I wanted to make it longer to tie in the front because I thought that was cuter. 
And you can do it her way, which is the draping method when you come to do your patterns. Yeah, and here's one example because we were talking about interfacing when it comes with collars. I was making a Dragon Age costume on Solus. If anyone knows Solus is, and here's what the collar looks like. And um, he has like his, it looks like basically like scraps around him, so I had to find fabric that will go good with it. And the collar, I use like a really thick one so it stays on there. Because that's what kind of like you, what you want when you have um, collars. Yeah, for the collars, you want them to be nice and stable. So you can look at different kinds of interfacing. If you have to do it with a knit, like Mr. Gray over there, I'm singling you out. He has a Mandarin style collar. That is what you would use a trico interfacing since that's for knit. He has a stable knit so it slightly stretches. But if you were to use um, your normal interfacing that doesn't have any stretch at all and it was, let's say, um, a full spandex one, like, you know, let's say Catwoman where she has a high collar and you used your normal woven interfacing, ironed it on whatever. One, first you would melt your spandex, and two, if you try to stretch it, that interfacing would bust or you would lose all stretch completely. So you can always read through and look through what it says when you go and buy your interfacing. It'll say if it's for knits, if it's for home decor, if it's a light weight for your basic stuff, or if it's a heavy weight for like your suit lapels. So there's different kinds of interfacing that you'll need in your pattern making. I normally use pretty much a general purpose one and that gets me through almost every project. I don't sew a lot of spandex and that's just because I don't like working with it. I think it's the devil sometimes. It can be the devil. It really it can really be. Can. Like, it's because sometimes you need a special, um, I think it's like a, I forget what the footer is called, like it's a footer that doesn't... Um, a Teflon foot. Yeah, there we go. That's, that's the one that you want to use. It's a non-stick foot that's great for sewing leather and spandex and vinyl. Especially if you're vinyl. using like fabric that stretches sometimes. Like, it's, oh yeah. It's and then there's a roller foot that actually helps it go through and a walking foot. There's a, like, I need to do like another panel that's introductory sewing and just introduction to like sewing feet. Because there, <laughs> there's so, so many, many different, different types of feet. <laughs> And another way you can make patterns, and I know a lot of my um, friends who do this, they'll get their dress form and then they'll get the saran wrap and then duct tape and then make a pattern that way. And that's, I think, one of the most common ways people do it in cosplay, to be completely honest. You can also make an entire, if you don't have enough money to um, get your own, like those body forms that they sell at a lot of stores. Um, the adjustable ones or the cheaper ones, yeah. but the professional ones are 200 to 500 dollars. Yeah, so if you want to, um, I have a Tumblr account and it actually has like a lot of tutorials if you ever want to follow, but I actually made an entire, like my own like forming suit by just using saran wrap and duct tape and that just, it took about, I think two hours. My feet were hurting because I was, uh, see, I was just standing like this just for two hours while they just saran wrap me. Like all like this here, here, all the way to at least to down where my shorts are and all the way to my arms, to my neck. And I just stand there like this for two hours and it killed me, but it worked. <laughs> it gets the job done. <laughs> yeah, and it's just $60 and you could just use that for your own uh, buy. And this could be applied to both men and women or children. Children, they'll probably complain. I was complaining a lot. Well, you'll need multiple because they they grow. Yeah, so make sure fast. you have two people with you because if it takes uh, one person, that is like a good hour and a half job for just one person. They must really love you if they do it for you. You have to <laughs> trust them as well too because they might get into those crevices, so you got to be very <laughs> comfortable with the person that you're with. <laughs> make sure they don't try to hurt you. <laughs> get back on you. And then my way that I like to do it, it's called dart alt manipulation and that's using my slopers. So I'm basically hacking and slashing at my old foundation patterns or tracing over it with tracing paper and then altering it that way. And that's what I prefer since I already have it. I don't have to make a mock-up or anything since I already know it fits and it saves me time. And I like to save time because I'm already busy enough as it is. And when you do the drape it way, what I like to do um, when I have to make a new sloper for class, well, when I had to make a new sloper for class, I transfer it onto pattern paper. And that's so I would have pretty much an extra copy of what I did. 
as well as I'm really bad at cutting things. My hands are shaky, so like it's horribly zigzagged. So I just straighten everything out and it looks cleaner. And this is always optional. I prefer it if I have to work with something really expensive. It's make a mock-up. It saves a lot of time and frustration if you're working with something expensive, like your $16 a yard fabric. You don't want to ruin it. You sometimes, you really do only get one shot at it. It's unless you're able to alter really well. And sometimes that's more frustration than it's worth. Yeah, and if you're always like unsure, like, well, do I need more or less? Like, make sure you just add more because it's easy to take off. Yes. Than it is to like when you have to add something. Um, let's see, but um, when I was talking about before, when I came to, when I was making, I was thinking of making the kind of key um, cosplay with the wiring, um, I was thinking of what I usually do when I was doing the Assassin's Creed call, the hoods, I, inside there's going to be inlining and I just put wire in that. You can find wiring like sometimes at fabric stores or if you get to just like Home Depot, just get like strong wire and you put it on there and you just like pinch it inside and just sew it around and it will actually bend and move to wherever you want. And I was doing, I was planning to do that with the tentacles he has. So I can actually bend and move any way that I want. And, but make sure if you do do that, always like, like wash these by hand. You don't want to put this in the washer yes. because it's going I'll go to into destroy that. it. I'll go into that later. And she is asking if you have any cards. Uh, yes, yes I have cards, sorry. Sorry. And if you make a pattern, it's always great to test and finish it up if need be. One thing I like to do with my paper patterns to test to see if I have to make adjustments, and this is mainly to bypass a mock-up because I'm lazy, <laughs> is I'll actually just use, um, sometimes I'll use painter's tape or just my little dress pins and put it on my dress form since I have it padded up to about my measurements. And then I'll pin link the darts and then pin that out and put the seam the way it should be. And it's like, oh, it fits just great on my dress form. Awesome. I don't have to do anything else. And that's great, especially with commercial patterns. I like to use as many commercial patterns as possible for the sake of time. I just have to cut it out versus testing anything since the pattern maker has already tested it. So it saves a lot of time considering um, I have a short torso, so I always have to alter to see how short I have to make it. Or if it's, um, what is it? I'm trying to think for skirts, that way they're not completely sitting all the way high-waisted. If I want it lower, I can alter it easier. And just what I do to alter them too is after I have it folded, I'll actually press on it with my iron so it stays flat and stays in place. Yeah, so especially right. when you're trying to clean up seams and everything, iron it first. Like yes. when, you, when you have it and you want to split it in the middle, just iron it, it's really quick and easy. And it's easier for when it comes to sewing and keeping everything in place. That's one thing I learned like the hard way, and I don't always do that. I am guilty, but um, that's it's just one of the techniques that if you do this, it will help to keep your cosplay not only like professional, but it also lasts longer. Yeah, because your seams when you're going through them are nice, crisp, and clean. So you're going, you can actually see everything <coughs> you're going through versus catching a wrinkle. Then you have to go and probably maybe leave some holes with your seam ripper, and then you ruin the longevity of your costume. So there's all sorts of different things you can do in the pattern making process that can help in your sewing as well. And one thing that can actually help you be a better seamstress or tailor is when you look at the patterns, it will actually give you some basic sewing terminology as well as how to do it, with, especially with the beginner like sewing patterns like like the learn to sew by simplicity or whatever when I was teaching my sister how to sew I would explain like oh this is what this kind of notion is a cotton is this kind of fabric it's made out of this and this and it helps you learn if you actually want to read through it not everyone wants to but if you're beginning I always advise reading it helps a lot also tutorials um, really help um, let's see if I can find this picture um, I usually do a lot of um, like inlining. Um, if you ever do in like you know you see those coats and it's like nice and black, but it's like red inside. Oh, it's yeah, the it's lining. Lining. It's I always find that it's really easy to do. It really is. It's not that complicated. And so I actually 
was making a costume that was going to be a Dalish elf. Let's see if I can find it over here. And what I did is that I created like two costumes in one by just doing inline. You know, it's really With lining, you can make something reversible, and that's awesome. I'm normally too lazy to do a lining, so I'll do what I really like is doing, it's called um, a Hong Kong finish, where you pretty much put the bias tape on the raw edge. So I like to do it with a contrasting color. That's what's on my Zatanna jacket. So it's black on the inside, and then it has all this white trim on the inside, and I think that looks really pretty. Okay, I'm in. But that's a personal preference. Yeah, sometimes you don't have to do inlining, but it's, it's really easy to do. What I usually do, and you can also um, practice as well, is um, if you want to practice, just get, have the pattern, and then pin it. Make sure it's like, they're like opposite, so when you flip it, because what you usually do is that you have the pattern, and then when you're done, you have a little opening where you can flip it, and that's when the seams will be like outside. And so, Here's one of the examples that I did. Let's see if I can pass this around. And while she's passing that around, we have 10 minutes if you have any questions for either one of us, since we both have different methods of pattern making. Mine's a little more professional, but that's, that's how I was taught, and I get OCD now that that's how like, I learned better. So if anyone has any questions on, she's better at draping than I am, and I'm better at following um, directions. Follow your directions, yes, honestly. As well as dart manipulation. Yes? You said it was easier to go um, from smaller to bigger on your patterns. Um, yes. Is that, uh, would you consider doing that um, for someone who is more fussier? Because I usually will go through the bigger wind and work try, to, try to trim at the waist. No, she said I normally go up bigger. on mine and that I just find it easier to size it up since one little thing I've noticed is that each size up is normally about a half an inch difference on the commercial patterns. So that makes it a little easier for me when I get my little mini ruler is I'll count how many sizes they have and then add half an inch per for how many I'm gonna need to go up by. And then sizing down, it's a little trickier for the reason of the curves will change like in the armhole. So that's where I have the problem is angling the curve the correct degree. Okay. So that's where I find it easier on a specific type of bodice. You can do it the other way. I personally find it harder. But Berta, they also have pattern making um, videos for how to go up or down. It's um, Connie Crawford. She's one of their pattern designers and she does the classes for it, as well as the tutorial videos. She also has her own YouTube channel as well. Yeah, you can find a lot of these things, like, on just YouTube. certain on YouTube. That's where, that's how I learned how to do some. My first costume was a, just an Assassin's Creed costume that I did, and I learned it by YouTube by a guy who basically used a trash bag and showed how to use a trash bag to make a pattern for whatever you're trying to make. Yeah, my first costume was Ori Nime from Bleach in her um, Arankar outfit. My grandmother and I had no pattern, we just figured it out. <laughs> and it was, it took us a month to hand sew, but it was fun. We ended up using, what is it, a freaking plate to angle one of the things for the pattern. So you can use whatever you have. You don't have to be professional. It just helps me now that I know it better to be. Yes, and yeah. you're raising your hand in the back. Sailor Saturn, I believe. Oh. Yeah, hello. Come over here, please. All right. I'm going to stand up so I can explain to you the problem I'm having, and I hope you can tell me how to correct it. Oh, come over here. Yeah, I don't have my glasses. I do apologize. Okay. okay. I didn't want to come here. So I have, um, I'm working on a bee orchid cosplay, and I have the fabric that I chose, like a moron, doesn't stretch. But it's supposed to be like a, a one-piece leotard, and I cut it, and the sides, like when you lay them flat, they're the same, right? They're like symmetrical and everything like that. And then when I sewed that center seam that's supposed to happen, and I put it on, it's like... It worked. That's actually more of a problem with the actual sewing right there. Okay. You probably didn't use the correct stitch or tension. Okay. And one thing... What happens when I try to hem in it is I have a tendency to pull since I'm used to doing woven so I can just pull it through to make it go faster. 
and that causes the ripples, it almost turns it into like a lettuce sort of thing. You have yeah, to. I've got like an S going down. Yep, I yeah, know exactly. It's a <laughs> sewing <laughs> issue. It's not a pattern problem, but that one's more of the sewing. You probably need a different footer as well, too, to make sure that doesn't happen as well. We were talking about the, the footer when it comes to the, the Teflon. Teflon. Yeah. That, that's probably and the walking really foot yeah. has an extra set of feed dogs on top, so it makes it glide through easier so it doesn't snag. Spandex has a tendency to snag. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. No problem. And then you had a question yes, next. Yeah. Um, so my question is, uh, I know you said you, you kind of alter commercial patterns a lot. Mm -hmm. So what's the most difficult thing you've made using a pattern that you've had to come up with yourself? Like That was probably my wife's uh, Shnee costume, her alternate outfit. Okay. It was actually a project for um, my construction to class so i had to draft something a certain way and that was difficult because i had to draft a collar a lapel a pocket and then make it a double breasted coat with long sleeves and then a skirt and everything and it had to be princess themed it had to be made a certain way and because it restricted anything i could do that's personally why it was harder yeah um, for me um well, depending on like what I'm doing, the hardest costume I made uh, for me was Hiccup's armor, and that was all done by leatherworking. Like I, and DreamWorks, if you're listening, you do not know how to do leatherworking. Like the way they, <laughs> they pattern the entire thing and then animate it looks like all flowing to your body. I'm like no, that's no. not how it works. That's not how it works, DreamWorks. And, it does um, not. So I had, to, and I had to fit it to my body. I actually messed up as well too because I was making the chest piece. And unfortunately, I forgot to add like the extra quarter inch for the sewing because I have to stamp, like get the holes in and sew it by hand. So I, so I was like, oh, it should fit. Put it on me. Nope, it does not fit. It's too tight. I'm not going to breathe in this anymore. So I had to breathe that. Important, though. Definitely. <laughs> Especially in the past. Ask anyone who wears a corset. It's not important. <laughs> but I had to redo that. And um, that was like believe maybe sixty dollars down the drain when it comes to leather working when when you mess up you and can't fix yeah. that you have to start all over from scratch um and that's where the mock-up really comes in handy is for those more expensive projects yeah. unless you're that confident in your ability then good luck to you yeah because i did because i made it all through crafting film first mm -hmm. and i i had it like yeah this is perfect and tried it nope nope because we did not add that extra that we thought of is just like burnt, like just blew my mind yeah, that's another thing people forget when they'll make their own patterns is to add the seam allowance yeah and if you actually buy vintage patterns from the 70s and 60s they don't have a seam allowance so you have to add it on there mm -hmm. it's just like a quarter inch like extra you know it depends it changes from project to project leather projects are about a quarter inch your knits are three eighths of an inch and then wovens and fashion industry standards is half an inch, but normal it's five eighths. And I prefer the five eighths because it gives you more wiggle room in case you are a little off. Yeah, and half inch kind of sucks. Yeah, and the other one that I'm, I was making, I haven't done yet, but I'm making the Assassin's Creed Syndicate. Um, e, I think her name is um, Evie Fry. E, yeah, Evie Fry's um, jacket right now. I'm, I just recently like finished it. I'm just adding all the um, eyelids to it right now. But I had to, you know, the coat itself was not only a lot of intricate detail, but in the back, um, there's basically, it's like two pieces that are like crisscross in the back. So I had to cut up that back in an angle like this and to make sure that when I put it on and I have elastic in the back so it, it can still move, I can still move and bend and it will still fit me as well too. And that that jacket was like a nightmare for me. It really Coats really was. are a nightmare. For class, I had to make a tuxedo jacket. Yeah. Like, that was, ah. Oh. This is like during Victorian era, so they have all these little details. I have it on my phone if anyone wants to come up here and look at it, but it's just tremendous details in and out of it. And it has like, an in, like a red inlining inside, and it's wonderful. But Dear God, that took me like it took more than a month. Yeah, jackets. I think almost regardless of how your sewing level is, they're honestly quite difficult. And they're usually big. There's a couple of times like you gotta be careful when you're sewing because you might <coughs> catch more fabric than you want to. And so you're sewing like three things inside. I'm like, oh snap! You have to un, 
you have to uh, get your own. Here. We have David. time for like one more question if anyone has. Yeah, any one more question? Anybody? Yes, yes ma'am. Ma um, I was trying to make this one costume. It's Stephanie from No Game No Life, and she has. I think I have it on my phone. She has like. A, um, she has the applique on the turtleneck, correct? Um, she. It's a. It's a bustier almost, and it has um, these cups for the breasts. Oh, those and are always kind of clean. Have and it has a big bag. And let me see if I can find it. Here it is. And I took cotton fabric right here. Yeah, that's actually, honestly, that's a really good draping project for you because of how it has, like, I can see where it ruffles under. Mm -hmm. You can kind of gather it with pins to see how you're going to pattern it out. Okay. So you, and you want, want to do the ruffle look on the top, I'm assuming, right? Right. Because I, I, I want to do the ruffling at the top here, like the zigzag. Um, the best way you could do it, what I usually do is kind of like fold the fabric like that. Mm -hmm. and then you, See, you that's what I started like doing. And that usually um, that I, usually works, but there's also a footer that can do the ruffle. Yeah, yeah, I have a ruffle foot. There's a ruffle it foot saves, you can buy. It saves me a lot of time hand gathering. Mm -hmm. But, but then how do, do I do the top? That's actually a scalloped edge, so you can buy fabric you know, that's scalloped edge. Oh, time. Time. yeah, that'll save you time versus hand awesome. doing the scallop. Yeah. Okay. Like, those are all so if you decide to drape it, I'll take it together. Draping, I just bunch the bag is like, okay. And then I see how full I want it. Okay, that's, that sounds good. And you can also, uh, I think, I'm definitely what would be the best Technical. I'll just give yeah. you the derp version. I'm honest. I'm gonna give you the derpy version. Yeah, so I get confused. Basically, I should ask you how to do it instead of her because I understand the derp version is more. <laughs> I have a lot of derpy versions. Like, no. <laughs> but you live with me. Yeah, I'm only doing guys from 